So my name's Paladin. I'm a uni graduate. I live in a C5 PVP corporation called Trek, the Red Circle Incorporated. And um, I've been teaching classes for uh, EVE University for uh, longer than I probably should have. All right, that being said, let's get started. What do you, uh, what for you are the characteristics of MR ships in general? Laser boats with armor. Very good. Laser armor. Anything else? They look cool. They look what? Awesome. Yeah, that they do. So, MR ships use lasers. They're the only ships that can reliably use lasers. Well, you can put laser on anything, but lasers use a lot of capacitor, so uh, only MR ships are uh, particularly suited to them. Let's talk quickly about lasers. So the good news about lasers, Tech 1 lasers don't use ammunition. Lasers are a mid-range weapon. They have huge, they have pretty good optimal. They have the best optimal range of the short-range weapons. And uh, they've got pretty good damage application. On the other hand, there are long-range weapons, which are the beam lasers. These guys have a relatively short range compared to other long-range weapon systems like uh, obviously cruise missiles, but also uh, artillery and particularly rail guns. The uh, drawbacks of lasers are they have usually bad tracking and uh, they're locked in damage with uh, electromagnetic and thermal, which means you have no flexibility, and in particular, um, Tech 2 min metal ships are going to be super hard to kill. The advantages are you do not carry a lot of ammo. You can swap ammo very quickly in one tick, and uh, you've got pretty good damage application. Lasers use up a lot of capacitors, so uh, a lot of MR ships are bonus for uh, laser capacitor usage. And uh, they also have pretty good capacitor and power grid. MR ships have a lot of mid, uh, a lot of low slots, very few mid slots, which means they're naturally armor tanks. There's a few exceptions to that rule, and we'll talk about them um, uh, while we get through them. But generally speaking, you're talking about armor tank and mostly about buffer armor tank. So let's get to the first MR ship, and this is going to be the Imperor. Thank you, Mystic X. So if you look at the Imperor, uh, this is noob ship, so the one that you get free. It's particularly weak, like all noob ships. The nice thing it has is it um, epitomizes all the bonuses of uh, more ships. It's got a uh, reduction in small energy target activation cost, so lasers do not um, uh, eat up as much capacitor as they otherwise would. They, it's got a little damage bonus. It has a bonus to armor resistances and a bonus to the effectiveness of its tracking disruptor. Like all noob ship, it's got a new war bonus. It's not a particularly strong one, but still it's there. What it means is if you're an MR pilot and you uh, have lost your ship in a row, you're in NPC null sec or in low sec, then you should probably dock up in a station. As long as you find a prop mod, a point, and a tracking disruptor, you can get back into the fight. You'll be a lousy frigate, but uh, you'll still be able to uh, contribute something to the fleet. Let's not uh, spend any more time on the year, uh, the Imperor, and move on to another uh, non combatant, uh, the Magnate. So the Magnate is the MR scanning frigate. Compared to waiting for the link. Uh, thank you, Mr. X. Uh, you know, uh, everybody else, I hope you're not relying on uh, just one person to uh, be providing all the links. So, this one is the uh, Scanning Forget. All races have one. It's got the same bonus as uh, the other ones. So, it's got a bonus to uh, Scanner Probe uh, Strength and it's got a bonus to Relic and Data Analyzers. Compared to um, other um, exploration frigates, this little guy has a lot of power grids, so it's easy to fit. It's not that fast, and uh, it's a bit stronger, but that's not particularly useful in a uh, scanning frig. Uh, it doesn't have many mids, so um, you cannot uh, you cannot fit as many of the uh, useful exploration modes as you probably would like to. But it does, uh, so it's not the best scanning frigate in the game, but uh, it does the job, it gets the job done. Moving on to uh, combat frigates. First one, uh, let's get with the um, executioner. 
The executioner is a fast tackle frigate. It's the MR equivalent to the Galente Atron, to the uh, Minmator Slasher, and to the Kildari Condor. Thank you, Mr. Kicks. Um, so as you can see, it's got a reduction in propulsion jamming systems activation cost. What this means is your point, your warp disruptor or your warp scrambler costs you less capacitor when you activate it, which is just as well because these are um, uh, these tackling frigates don't have much capacitor. It's got a little reduction in small energy turret uh, activation cost and a bonus to small energy turret damage. The good things about this ship, that's actually a pretty good ship. Uh, generally speaking, and I'll be saying this a lot, Amar ships are not particularly good solo boats. If you are an Amar pilot and uh, you want to go solo, then I'm afraid you're a bit out of luck until you're hitting the, um, at least with the beginning ships. Other races are much easier to uh, get into solo with. Um, the Amar uh, MR also requires more skill, but we'll get into that later. So the Executioner, compared to the others, is extremely fast. Not quite as fast as the um, Goldari Slasher, obviously, but it's very fast. It's got an excellent uh, signature resolution, meaning it can lock very fast. It's practically an interceptor. That's very good needle frigate. You can even solo with it, but uh, you have to be careful. You're fast. You've got decent punch for a frigate. The problem you have is you have very, very little, uh, very, very little tank. Next frigate, the Punisher. So the Punisher is um, the heavy combat frigate. It's got the same bonus to small energy damage as the Executioner has, but it's got a bonus to all armor resistance. That 4% bonus to all armor resistances is something that you'll see in a lot of more boats. That's pretty nice to have. Uh, if you've got no, uh, an active armor tank, it means that your armor repair is more effective. Uh, on the other hand, you will run into capacitor troubles because uh, activating lasers and an armor repair is going to be a lot for your capacitor. But if you are running a buffer tank like in a fleet, this guy will be very effective because your logi will be repairing more effective head points. Now, this is a ship that gets a lot of uh, attention from new players because they look at the bonuses. This guy's got a bonus to uh, damage and a bonus to resistances. Looks like the Great Frigate. And indeed, for your first PvE missions, it's a pretty good choice. You will run out of capacitor very quickly uh, because you'll be trying to run a normal repair as the tutorial would have uh, taught you. And so you'll have to warp out from uh, your mission site, dock, um, regen your capacitor, and uh, come back again. That's uh, the sad tale of early MR uh, PvE. On the other hand, as a solo PvP ship, it's pretty much terrible. The reason being that, yes, it's got a good tank, but it's only a brawler, meaning it can only fight at short range. Other brawling ships have got better speed or better DPS at close range, so uh, the Punisher cannot control range. What it would like to do, ideally, would be to use the superior range of the Tech 2 lasers, like Scorch, and get at the edge of your um, warp, scrambling, uh, warp Scrambler range and uh, hit your opponents at like uh, 8 or 9 kilometers using Tech 2 ammunition like Scorch and uh, kill them from there. Uh, problem being that uh, you won't be fast enough to catch the fast ships like uh, most Caldera ships, and you will not have the mid slots to fit a warp scrambler and a web and a propulsion, uh, propulsion module. So the only having two mid slots means it's an absolutely terrible solo ship. You can win some fights, but you will lose more than you win, I'm afraid. It's decent as a fleet boat because you can have some of your fleet with um, a prop mod and a warp scrambler and the rest of the fleet with a prop mod and web so uh, with uh, between the the ships of your fleet you will have a prop, you will have obviously prop mods but you will have uh, scrams and webs and then you've got the decent firepower very good tank and uh, if you add a couple of uh, logistics frigates in them you are looking at a very very effective gang as I will be repeating again, more ships are pretty good in fleets, but they're, even though they're not that great uh, solo, at least for the tech one ones. 
much better solo boat is the tormentor tormentors got a bonus to uh, small energy target damage like the other two and it's got uh, yeah congratulations finally somebody beat uh, mystic x i'm still thanking you mystic x but it's nice to see some competition so uh this this guy gets a reduction in small energy turret activation cost meaning it uh, uses a uh, less capacitor to uh, fire its lasers which is pretty handy this means that with the uh, amount frigate at level five you are using 50 percent less capacitor to activate your turrets that's pretty nice this guy is a really mean brawler the reason being that it's got three med slots so it can fit a scram web and a prop pod so essentially with this uh, your mentor you will try to get within range of your uh, target right back sorry about that gotta hate real life so um as i was saying the tormentor is a great brawler the reason being it's got three med slots so it's got prop mod warp scrambler shuts down the enemy's warp, micro warp drive and then it's got a web to make sure this guy stays where you want it you want the guys to be not super close because if he's got blaster you're going to die but you won't hit at exactly arm's length and to uh, take advantage of the superior optimal range of your lasers. Uh, problem with the Tormentor is it's just a brawler. can absolutely not kite, it's not fast enough, but it's a bit more agile than a Punisher. So uh, it will see some use in faction warfare sites um, because you will land on zero, so you will be caught by the Tormentor and ideally killed. Tormentor warping into faction, uh, faction warfare site will, if he catches uh, his opponent, be uh, quite uh, a good match. Next one is uh, the Crucifier. This is an absolutely fabulous frigate. Crucifier is probably, in my opinion, in my completely biased opinion, but it's also, um, I want to say, objectively speaking, I think this is probably the best frigate for a new player to get into fleet with. It's uh, just as useful as the Molus, and um, it is, uh, it has better range. So, um, short aside, the, this is the electronic attack frigate. So, uh, that's one more ship that is not going to be going to brawl. Definitely not. It's got paper tank, and uh, paper is probably being optimistic. What it does have is it's reasonably agile. It has got a few mid slots, which, uh, like all electronic attack frigates, um, uh, this is an electronic warfare frigate, tech one. And uh, what it has is bonuses to tracking disruptors. Tracking disruptors essentially make your guns miss. Problem they have is they only work on guns, so uh, lasers, pro projectiles, and um, hybrids. If you are facing a missile ship with a crucifier, you're out of luck. If you're in a fleet and the enemy only has missile, then you're not going to be doing much. And um, if you're on your own and the enemy is a drone boat, then you can try to disrupt the drones themselves, but that's going to have only limited effectiveness, except against ships that have very few drones, like the Gomer or Authors. Or even Rattlesnake. So this guy's got a bonus to tracking disruptor effectiveness and optimal range. What it means is, with only one and a half to two hours killing, uh, you have an optimal range of about 50 kilometers. Uh, I think my crucifier, not even sure I've got one here, but from memory, my crucifier uh, had an optimal range of about uh, 120 kilometers. Something like that fitted as um, a full fleet E war ship. So that's a very, very uh, effective ship uh, in the right context. You do not want to come into range, obviously, and you want to be warping out every um, if you feel you might be in danger. It's also an actually good solo ship. Uh, does require being, um, uh, how should I put it, uh, not adverse to losing ships. Uh, yes, Mr. Gix, uh, a little interruption. Uh, can you use this ship to effectively disrupt bigger ships, battlecruisers, or battleships? Absolutely, anything with guns. 
Um, I don't want to waste too much time going into e-war, but essentially what a tracking disruptor does, uh, let's say you've got uh, a more frigate to uh, three or four with the bonuses that the crucifier has. Um, one of these disruptors with the right script and suddenly your optimal range is down by um, about 40%. So uh, you thought you were still within optimal or within early fall off range, so you were applying pretty much close to 100% damage due to range, but actually you're into deep fall off. If you're a laser boat, then uh, you're in serious trouble. And it uh, doesn't matter the size of the ship. Otherwise, it also works on your the tracking of your ship. So uh, it means that if you orbit a ship, then suddenly the ship is going to be missing much more often because uh, the guns are not going to be able to track. Is that clear? I'll take that as a yes. Uh, feel free to ask again if uh, it didn't uh, answer your question. So the example I'm going to give might uh, illustrate it. Uh, as a solo ship, if you're not afraid of losing your ship, which you will from time to time because this is really a flimsy ship, there's two ways you can solo other ships in the Crucifier. The first way, get yourself at range. It's not going to work on too big a ship, but it will work on frigates and it will work on a lot of cruisers. Be careful, do not, it's not going to work against missile ships and it's going to be very, very um, ineffective against uh, drone ships, although it might work. So let's assume you're, you have found um, a frigate with guns. First tactic is just to um, get at 20 kilometers, point it, and remain within about 20 kilometers. Meanwhile, his range is down to about half of what it should be. If you've got two tracking disruptors, then uh, it's becoming about a uh, little over um, between 25 and 30 percent of what it should be. So he will probably not be hitting you. And uh, your drones are killing him uh, very slowly, if I may say, because you can only have three out at a time, but still. Uh, second technique is uh, you do exactly the opposite. You get right within um, very super close range. You may use the uh, tracking structure to um, reduce your opponent's range while you're uh, closing in. Then once you're close, you orbit it, and then you apply a hefty dose of uh, tracking structure so that his gun are not going to be able to track you. Uh, even though you might be webbed, that will probably be enough that he will miss you anyway. And then you orbiting from uh, from close and uh, use your drones. And if you have uh, any uh, anything that uh, applies DPS in your high slots, you might use that as well for a bit uh, faster killing. Obviously, uh, that sort of technique means one of you is going to die. And uh, like if he's got any friends, uh, that one is probably going to be you. But it's super fun. Last Amor frigate is the Inquisitor. Hey, Mystic X was the one on the ball. So the Inquisitor is the Amor logistics frigate. If you look at it, its bonuses is that it's got 500% bonus to remote armor repair range, like all uh, Tech 1 logistics frigates. And it's got a bonus to uh, remote armor repair and uh, amount and activation cost. Compared to the other logistics frigates, uh, there's four races. The um, uh, uh, Minmator and Kildari uh, have bonuses to repair shield because they're mostly shield tanked. The Amar and Galente have bonuses to repair armor. So its closest equivalent would be the Galente Navitas. Uh, frankly, they're extremely close. Uh, the Navitas repairs a little bit more and is a bit more agile. The Inquisitor is a bit tankier. Uh, they're both pretty good. The Inquisitor is a bit harder to uh, have cap stable. You will probably require a cap booster as a fit. Hey, I've got one here. Might as well link the fit. So here's, for instance, uh, one ship that, uh, one uh, Inquisitor that I flew in a normal frigate, uh, frigate room. It was pretty fun. As you can see, it only has two mid slots, like uh, a lot of them are frigates. But that's okay, I don't need a point. And that's it for the Tech 1 Amar frigate. Any questions about these guys before we move on to the next size?
Okay, no questions, great questions. Uh, first destroyer, first tech one destroyer is going to be the coercer. So like all destroyers, this guy is a glass cannon. He's um, can have a lot of lasers, uh, not much tank. He's got a big signature, so it's going to be uh, hit, um, eating up a lot of damage. Um, it is not quite as popular as all the destroyers because all the others have like a, um, a king of the meta fit. Like the catalyst is unmatched as um, as a brawler. You can get like uh, 700 DPS out of it. No way you can uh, get that out of uh, any other destroyer for that matter, but particularly not in the more ship. Uh, on the other hand, um, the cormorant, for example, is great at uh, sniping with uh, railguns. You have a lot of cormorants and they will uh, alpha a lot of things. Uh, Thrasher is extremely flexible and if you give it artillery, it can alpha you, kill you in one or two salvos. Very fun little ship. Coercer is a little less intuitive. It does not have a lot of mid slots. That's putting it mildly. Um, checking to see if I have a fit. If I have a fit here that I could use. Yeah, maybe this one. I don't know why I'm missing one rig on it. So, as you can see, this one, this is uh, it's got an afterburner, it's got a warp scrambler, uh, eight lasers, and um, uh, DPS rigs. Then it's got an active armor repair. Celery, I suppose, yes, and uh, just one heat sink. You can make it even more glass cannoning with more heat sinks. The general idea is it's not very tanky, and here I'm relying on the huge uh, damage projection of Scorch. Uh, with um, these guns, I've got uh, an optimal range of 10 kilometers and a fall off of 13. A bit surprised, I thought I could do better than that, but um, I'm going to be applying damage very, very well to um, anything small size on that. So uh, this guy has a bonus to uh, tracking and activation cost, as well as a bonus to uh, optimal range. So um, I'm going to kill frigates very, very fast, and you can do some good solo with that uh, when you know the ship. You can probably get better range out of um, uh, out of it than I have in this fit. So it's an excellent frigate killer. Uh, these tech one destroyers are a bit uh, hard to fit in the meta, aside from specialized roles, and this one's no exception. But uh, if you want to uh, intercept frigates on the cheap, this one will do it very well because it's got very good damage application in that it will not do as much DPS as a catalyst, but it will do uh, it will apply its DPS reliably within uh, 10 kilometers of, uh, of the ship. Next, uh, a more destroyer is the Dragoon. So the Dragoon, thanks Mystics. Um, the Dragoon is the first in a series of MR ships that are focused around energy neutralizing and drones. In the case of the Dragoon, it does not work all that well. But let's stop to um, let's stop and examine this guy. So it's got a bonus to drone hit points and damage. Uh, like a lot of MR ships, this um, he does not have a great bandwidth. Meaning that um, it's uh, it can only launch five light drones at a time. On the other hand, it's got a big drone bay, uh, so it's got uh, three flights, three full flights of light of light drones. Sorry about that. Um, so this means you can have uh, two spare flights and uh, either build in some uh, redundancy or flexibility. Problem it has it it doesn't have great drone DPS compared to other drone boats, particularly the Galente. The Galente usually have very good drone bandwidth and uh, smaller uh, drone base, meaning they they um, the, they can feel drones that pack more punch because they can feel more drones or heavier drones than the MR uh, for the same size. Except that once you kill their drones, uh, you will uh, you will deplete a greater proportion of their total supply. This guy also has a bonus to energy neutralizer, 
um, which for PV it's totally useless. And PVP can be pretty nice. It's got a bonus to range, so at level five you will have double range and double uh, double strength. The main problem being that um, it is not uh, its own capacitor is going to be um, uh, how should I put it uh, somewhat strained to keep up with all these nukes. Particularly since, like all these Amolite chips, it only has two mid slots. So if you give it a prop mod, the uh, second mid slot uh, has to be a point, or you'd rely on somebody else to tackle the targets. And if you have a prop mod and a point, then your capacitor is going to run out fairly quickly from all those nodes. Uh, Dragon versus Algos for PVE. Uh, I'd say Algos because the Algos has got more, um, has got better DPS. Uh, for PVE, PVP, uh, PVP, probably uh, the Algos as well. It definitely has more use. Dragon's going to be more niche. Um, you can use the Dragoon as a super fast kiting ship with a lot of drones that doesn't care about losing one flight of drones, or you could use it as a sort of a brawler because let's face it, even with a bonus, you're going to have like 10 kilometers, uh, 12 kilometers range on these nudes, but you can uh, use it as a brawler in a Desi and frigate fight, or even cruisers, assuming you've got lodges to keep you alive because you're not uh, you don't have that great of a tech. Any questions on the destroyers, or can we move to cruisers? So to summarize, uh, Cursor is not very popular, but it's actually a good ship. Uh, Dragoon, apart from some niche use, uh, not that great, I think. Okay, first small cruiser is the Omen. The Omen is the fast small cruiser. It's um, the equivalent to um, the Thorax and um, uh, maybe the Kaldari Caracol. It's got a bonus. It's got a double. Uh, it's got a bonus to um, um, firepower, five percent per uh, per level to uh, medium energy target rate of fire. So that's better than um, five percent damage uh, straight. Five percent damage. And it's got a reduction in uh, activation cost for its medium energy turrets. This is actually a fun ship. It's uh, quite a fun ship to fly in a fleet. You're reasonably fine. Uh, you're reasonably fast. You can pack a decent punch for a Tech One cruiser. But uh, I'm not sure what niche it could have um, compared to the other Tech One cruisers. Because if you look at it, it does not have superlative DPS. Uh, Thorax has got better DPS. And uh, it's not that fast. So uh, you can fit it uh, as an armor tank ship. Like this, for example. Or as a shield omen. Uh, shield is a fleet use, obviously. Uh, you don't have a point. You have less tank than if you had armor. Um, I'm not sure whether it's an afterburner on the, on this fit. You probably should have probably should have a micro warp drive. And um, but the good news is you've got more um, uh, more uh, low slots for a heat sink, so uh, you have a bit more punch. So this is the uh, Omen. Uh, this is the Amor cruiser. Uh, this is uh, Tech Amor uh, Tech One Amor version of the Kaiti cruiser. It's not very successful as Kaiti cruiser because it's got decent but not great DPS and it's got okay speed but not that great. There's a lot of faster ships there. Uh, Caracal's faster. Uh, Stabber is obviously much faster because it's Minotaur. Uh, Thorax is has got more flexibility. It's a better brawler, and uh, it's also better as a sniper or as a, a nano cruiser. So Norman's fun to fly in a fleet, but probably not. Uh, it's not great compared to the others. The next cruiser, the Mauler. Now the Mauler is a ship that I really, really like. Um, if you're a new Mauler player, you're looking to PVE, uh, Mauler is a ship you will be spending some time in. Get into a Mauler for those uh, level two missions and uh, you won't regret it. 
that's a very forgiving ship. It's, it's extremely tanky. It's, uh, if you lose your molar to NPCs, you have uh, done something seriously wrong because that's a super strong ship. It's got 4% bonus to all armor resistances, meaning that um, at, say, a monk cruiser level 3, 12% of all the damage, of all the armor damage you take is negated before the rest of your tank kicks in. It's got a medium energy target damage bonus, and it's got a little drone bay with uh, three drones, which is good for when frigates attack you, because what the Muller is not is fast and nimble. Uh, at least one EVE University um, FC, Gareth Corellian, used to do Muller fleets. I don't know if he does them anymore. And he had a lot of fun with these smaller fleets. Like he was do, uh, using them very flexibly. He had some uh, uh, some capacity, some nooting molars and some uh, brawling molars plus uh, lodges. And you had the archetypical um, mall fleet. You had a very very strong phalanx of armored ships that was pretty resilient to uh, other gangs and that could deal a fair amount of damage if it could get within range. The main problem this has was this was a brawling doctrine, so if the enemy managed to kill you or evade the fight altogether, then there wasn't much that the Molov could do. But as a um, low SP and uh, effective doctrine, that's a very nice ship, very flexible. Also very good bait. Uh, you want to send a ship ahead to be ag um, aggroed behind a gate. Uh, Moller is probably going to be living long enough for um, until your backup arrives. Obviously, every uh, th the rest of New Eden knows about that, so a lone Moller will often be construed as bait. Uh, uh, the only good side of which being if you are actually traveling solo in a Moller, there's a chance that people will leave you alone thinking you're bait. Uh, don't do that with wall targets. Next to Mark Cruiser, uh, talking about the Muller, about the fleet with uh, logistics, let's talk about the Augur. So the Augur is the MR Logistic Cruiser Tech 1. It's got the usual bonuses to, uh, it's got bonuses to uh, remote armor repairs. Um, and it's got, so essentially it can um, transfer capacitor and armor repair, uh, remote armor repair much better than a non-specialized ship. So like the, um, um, like the, I forget its name, uh, like the uh, frigate, it's, um, it's a normal logi ship. So if you compare it to the Galente equivalent, which is the Execrer, the advantage of the Augurer is that it is tankier. The drawback is that it, it is not cap stable. You rely on having a cap body to feed you capacitor, and you feed it capacitor back. With the roll bonus, your remote capacitor transmitter will be transferring 200% more than it receives. And with that bonus, you will be able to create capacitor out of thin air and uh, get cap stable as long as you've got a cap buddy. Drawback to that is, of course, your chain will be uh, more easily disrupted. Okay, back. So, um, compared to the question, the Augur does not repair more than the Oniros. Uh, what it is is tankier. The Oniros is faster. It's got smaller SIG radius, so it's probably better suited to a small gang, a small gang configuration. Because the good thing is, alone on Eros, um, as long as he keeps himself out of trouble, that uh, on Eros, uh, Execrer, the on Eros is the uh, Tech 2 equivalent. But it's the same, by the way. Francie asked, does the uh, Tech 2 Logi ship have the same cap problems? Yes. Uh, regardless of whether Tech 1 or Tech 2, the um, Midmotor is cap stable shield, uh, Kildari is non-cap stable shield, Amar is non-cap stable armor, and Galente is cap stable armor. So to compare it to the Execrer, uh, the Augur is not as fast. It repairs, I believe, a little bit less, but it's comparable, frankly. The, the, there's not much difference. Um, and it's not cap stable. So if you, you need a pair of Augurs, a lone Augur is not worth much. It's going to run out of capacitor very quickly. A pair of Augur, if you uh, disrupt one of them, 
like uh, jam them, then you've got two augurs out of the fight because the uh, one is uh, disrupted and the other one is um, suddenly uh, capped out. Whereas if you have a pair of executors and you uh, jam one of them or otherwise neutralizes or force it to warp out or is disconnects or well anything, uh, you still got one executor left. That's the uh, uh, downside of being not cap stable. The upside is the auger is uh, stronger. Uh, has got a stronger tank, so if you have like a cell of uh, more than two, say three, four, or five augurs, then these guys are all feeding cap to each other, and if one of them gets taken out of the care of the chain because say he's jammed, then all the cap transfers are switched to uh, the others. So instead of uh, transferring caps between five ships, you've got uh, cap transfers between four, and they're all super cap stable. Uh, because of that incoming cap, they can also be uh, transfer capacitor much better than the uh, auger uh, than the executor so uh, you can have dedicated cap feeding augurs that will uh, cap up any neutralizing ships that the MRs might have so uh, auger is a pretty good ship it's not as good as the executor if you're doing a re uh, fairly light fast uh, small room but uh, it's extremely tanky and in a, in a brawly environment where you'll be uh, dealing DPS and you need to tank uh, incoming DPS and you want to newt out your targets, the Augur and particularly its Tech 2 uh, variant, the Guardian, will be absolutely king. Mystic X says, I speculate that the lack of mid slots, only three on the Augur, would mean that along with the propulsion mod and at least one mod for target disruption defense, you wouldn't have spots left for capped and charge bonus mods. Absolutely, but you do not need them. Uh, the Augur is not cap stable with its reps. End of story, don't try. On the other hand, what it has is cap buddies. So in the Augur, um, let's see, I probably have one. So this is an Augur fit that I use for uh, Spectre Fleet, I believe. So as you can see, it's got uh, low slots or full armor tank, and uh, all the rigs are uh, Trimark armor pumps. So uh, this guy has a very strong tank for a Tech, uh, tech 1 cruiser. The high slots have three armor repairers, which is as much as the executor. It's got two cap transfers, which it needs to, uh, it needs two incoming cap transfers, I believe, to be cap stable. With only one, I'm cap stable for about a minute, assuming my three armor repairs are working. So this allows me to sneak in some uh, cap transfer from time to time. And uh, my mid slots have a prop mod, uh, an ECCM, so uh, to avoid being jammed, and I completely forget uh, that I should be able to fit something else as my third mid slot. Um, I probably should be fitting a remote sensor booster so that my um, Logi buddies would be able to target uh, for longer. But as this was a Spectre fleet and I did not 100% trust my fleet mates, I uh, added a cap booster. So that if I was left alone, I mean, uh, like my cap buddies, the chain, the cap chain was disrupted, then I would st still have capacitor to operate and um, bring on some uh, emergency repairs. So that third mid slot, you probably want something other than this uh, cap booster, at least in a fleet you trust. Okay, last cruiser, the Arbitrator. Arbitrator is a uh, extremely powerful cruiser. So it's an atypical one. It's not a normal brawler, unlike the others. Uh, this guy has a lot of uh, low slots, but it does not have a uh, super great, um, does not have super great uh, tank. Like this is a fit that I used to use in the uh, E-Uni fleets. So as you can see, it's got no DPS. All it has is uh, drones. It's got a small, uh, oh yeah, there's a light missile launcher. I don't remember what I fit that in, probably because it had the spare high slot and the spare uh, CPU. But essentially what it has is armor tank. And don't go and think that this armor tank means you are actually tanky. What it means is the arbitrator, despite its, uh, despite its futuristic shape, is about as nimble as uh, your average bed. 
so it's going to take time to get into warp if somebody targets you and uh, you won't be able to survive until then that's about all your tank can give you what the arbitrator does is it's a drone boat so it's got a bonus to um, bonus to drone hit points and um, dps it does not put out a lot of dps with its drones despite the bonuses because they're only drones and it's got a weak bandwidth it can only use a flight of medium drones so medium drones even with the 50 percent bonus assuming you've got more cruiser to five is not a lot of dps uh, it also has a bonus to tracking structures, so assuming you find a guy with guns in that armor trader, you could um, you could try um, nooting his capacitor out, and then you, it's about like the uh, crucifier, you would uh, either uh, get in range and, um, uh, and uh, disrupt this range so that you would be, uh, you'd find yourself out of range. This is not going to work all that well with a cruiser. Uh, on some cruisers it's going to work but on others not that great uh, your best bet is probably because you're not very fast unlike the uh, crucifier your best bet is probably to get in close scram web and uh, disrupt the tracking of your target so it's not able to hit you with its guns and meanwhile uh, slowly grind at it with your drones uh, as a fleet boat, uh, as the fleet I link gave you, this is a pretty effective tracking disruption ship. The nice the advantage it has over the crucifier, it's got less range, but it still has very decent range because tracking disruptors have excellent range, and uh, it's more survivable. So assuming you've got lodges, you it's safe for you not to warp out as soon as you see that people might be targeting you. And that's it for Amartek One cruisers. Any questions about these guys? Cool, because I'm running late. All right, getting into more battle cruisers. Uh, first, we just talk about the arbitrator. Let's talk about his big brother, the prophecy. So, prophecy is another one with the uh, bonus to uh, drones. He's got very good tank, bonus to all armor resistances. It can think fit all the links so um, to uh, provide boost to the fleet but usually you will leave that to specialized boosters uh, that's a very tanky ship uh, pretty nice to fc from you can fit in the high slot since you've got no bonuses you can fit um, energy neutralizers in which case you will require a cap from your uh, friendly augurs or you can fit uh, things that do not require a cap like um, artillery guns, uh, missiles, or um, even uh, if you want to go snipey, some uh, drone range extending uh, modules. Um, since it's got a very strong tank, you often use it seen as bait. And uh, then the idea is it's going to sneak in close, absorb a lot of punishment, and um, uh, try to kill your capacitor and use its drones to, and maybe if it's got any spare high slots, uh, grind you down. Very good uh, fleet boat, not that great. I have never seen it used for solo because it's so slow. It's in the more armored battleship, so it is super slow. Next is the Harbinger. Uh, the Harbinger, I absolutely love that fit when I was in, uh, when I was in it. It's great for PVE, by the way. Uh, it's got good punch. Uh, good punch, particularly, strangely enough, uh, probably the best punch you can find with it. Uh, let's see. This is a fit that I used to uh, use for incursions and then later PVE. This one from uh, Eclipse Badawan, from uh, who's a Selenie Uni, I believe, uh, was used. Uh, this one, uh, the Eclipse fit, requires a very, very good fitting skills. Otherwise, you won't be able to uh, cram the uh, three heat sinks. Nice thing about the uh, the Shield Harbingers is it's got a lot of DPS because uh, you can use all its low slots for uh, the three uh, heat sinks. And uh, the tank is enough to passive tank a uh, level three mission. Uh, you cannot uh, passive tank the entire DPS of the uh, level 3 missions, but that's not a problem because as soon as you land on grid, um, that DPS will be whittled down because it's a very ganky uh, battle cruiser. Normally, the Harbinger is armor tanked, 
I don't have any of these fits uh, saved because it's been a while. So you will have uh, armor tank and some uh, damage mods in the low. And uh, then in the uh, mid slots, you'll have things like uh, a prop, a point, and uh, maybe something like a tracking shooters or maybe a web if you want to go brawly. The nice thing about this is uh, it's got very good damage project projection up to about 20, 25 kilometers. So uh, pretty nice, good DPS. The main drawback is in the current meta of the game, it is completely useless in PvP. Uh, the reason being that it's so slow and its guns do not track well enough that um, anything that um, uh, a lot of things will be able to outrun it, so he won't be able to catch a lot of stuff, and the things that he will catch will either be too big for it or uh, will simply get under his guns and then he will only have one flight of light drones to deal with them, and that's a bit of a problem. So um, I would really, really like to uh, use the Hobbit your game, but at the moment that's not possible. Uh, the good news is uh, somebody's echoing. Somebody is um, uh, using his um, uh, mumble with the uh, online. Uh, uh, make sure you mute yourself if you got the uh, loudspeakers, or use a uh, push to talk. Thank you. Um, so the good news is, in the next patch, CCP is going to rebalance uh, the um, combat battle cruisers, and the Harbinger is getting a boost to its uh, optimal range and fall off range. So it's going to have a bit more range, and I he may it may be getting a little bit more tracking as well. Not entirely sure. Anyway, the idea is this one is due for a revamp, and that's of the three or more battle cruisers. That's the one that is getting the most buff from the next patch because that's the one that that needs it most. The prophecy is getting a small boost to its drone speed to encourage it to use more heavy drones and less sentries. But um, and the oracle I'm going to get into is in a pretty good place at the moment. So last one is the oracle. Uh, the oracle is called um, the, the the oracle is um, like the tornado Talos and um, and the Naga. This is the glass uh, the battle cruiser version of the glass cannon. It's got um, uh, battleship sized guns, so huge firepower, uh, horrible tracking. It's fairly fast. And uh, doesn't have much of a tank. So if you look at it, it's got a reduction to large energy turret activation cost and a bonus to large energy turret damage. Essentially, this guy can deal almost as much damage from his bonuses as uh, an Amar battle, uh, battleship like an Abaddon. So it's pretty huge. It's got very, very good um, firepower and it's got very, very good range. With Scorch, this guy will put out a good 600, 700 DPS to up to 55 kilometers. You can fit it to uh, project even more than that if you have some specialized ships. Um, what disadvantage does it have compared to Battleship Frenzy? Well, uh, first disadvantage is uh, doesn't have. Uh, it only has a fraction of the tank that a Battleship would have. That's probably the biggest disadvantage. Uh, second disadvantage, it doesn't have as many low slots, so it's never going to uh, out DPS even in the bad end. Well, it might, depends on the depends on the fit, but usually it will not. But this guy puts out a very good amount of DPS. Uh, you can armor tank it, and in which case you uh, it's very nice for post bashing, for example, give it uh, take one ammunition. That does not deplete. It's got good range, and you've got very decent firepower that you can uh, uh, put in the range of um, a pass and uh, pretty much AFK whittle down the pass. Uh, one of my favorite fits and a very common fit for this battle cruiser, if I can find it. Oh yeah, it's called these. These are called the attack battle cruisers. Uh, don't have any of these? Yes, I do. This.
this guy. Uh, currently, Chesser has uh, an improved version of this ship. Um, Chesser's fit has less tank. Instead of having uh, shield tanking rigs, he's got uh, optimal range rigs, so uh, he's got better damage projection at range than uh, I with this fit. So this is a fairly fast battle cruiser. It's going like uh, 1500. And um, it's uh, you're looking at a good um, almost 900 DPS at close range, and as I said, uh, six to 700 DPS up to 55. So that's very very good damage projection. The drawback it has is uh, it's not cap stable. So if you are firing continuously and using your micro warp drive continuously, it's not cap stable. At least not with my skills. I've got very decent uh, capacitor skills. Uh, but mostly tracking is horrible. As I said, uh, laser tracking is not is really not great. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the worst of all the uh, short range weapons. And uh, this is uh, these are launch guns. So anything that is not web and that is um, less than uh, 20, 25 kilometers from you uh, is going to get under your guns. You're going to miss it. So you really, really do not want to get within multi frequency range of your targets in that ship. Unless you've got a fleet behind you, unless you've got somebody to web your target, but other than that, uh, you won't stay at range. Good news is, as I said, uh, 700 at 55, which is pretty much unmatched in any um, battle cruiser. Um, Talos does more DPS. Uh, Tornado and Naga have better range. Uh, Tornado has better alpha, unmatched alpha with artillery. Naga is unmatched with range. But uh, that capacity for damage projection at medium range is what the MOS are good at. Any questions about those battle cruisers? Okay, let's move on to battleships. So, um, to give us a little spoiler, uh, more frigates, not that great. Um, Crucifier is great. Uh, Tormentor is a very good brawler, but it's not the best brawler around. It's a scary brawler, but there's other scary brawlers around. And it's definitely not the top of the frigate meta at the moment. At the moment, if you've got like a frigate free for all and you're limited to more frigates, you are going to suffer a bit, I have to admit. Among cruisers, there are some good ones. Muller's good. But it's um, it's sort of a niche role. Arbitrator is very good, but it's not easy to fly. And the same, it's not like uh, the thing that is going to make everybody else walk away in fear. Uh, battle cruisers, Harbinger is not that great, but then all the uh, combat battle cruisers in its category are, are um, in no real better place. Uh, Prophecy is nice, but again, it's niche, like it's super tanky drones. And uh, Oracle is very nice. Oracle is definitely nice. But again, um, for a very specific set of people. Uh, you couldn't say that in general, uh, more cruisers or battle cruisers really shine compared to the others, except the uh, probably the uh, Logis. On the other hand, once you get into battleships and big ships, yeah. Uh, battleships is where you will be happy to have skill up more. So, who should we start with? Um, I'll start with the one I know uh, have, have flown the least, which is the Apocalypse. The Apocalypse is uh, not as tanky as other Amar battleships, and it's got a um, bonus to optimal range and tracking speed. This guy is the sniper of Amar battleships. Now, don't get me wrong, compared to real snipers, it uh, does not have enough range. But it's got pretty good range. You've got, um, you are dealing out decent damage at 80 to 100 kilometers. Uh, if you want to PvP, to PvE in an MR battleship, this is probably a good choice. You do not, unlike other MR ships, you do not want to brawl with that ship. It's got a tracking speed bonus, but still battleship doesn't have great tank. Uh, compared to other more battleships, so I might be a bit wary of brawling with it. But then I don't have much experience doing PvE and in, uh, in it. The real more ship of the line is the Abaddon. The Abaddon is uh, I love this battleship. Uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, it's not that great uh, in the current meta because lasers do not have the extreme range that at which a lot of battles are fought at the moment. But other than that, uh, the Abaddon has got great tank. It's got the uh, signature more 4% bonus to all armor resistances per level. Meaning, if you ever get around to training more Battleship 5, you will have an extra 20% resistances on all your armor, which is pretty nice because you've got a lot of armor, as you could imagine. Uh, it's got a bonus to large energy turret damage, so you've got, you're looking at a full rack of turrets. You do not have utility slots, uh, because MR. Uh, they're for wimps, like, uh, Minmetar. Uh, so you've got very good tank, you've got quite decent damage. Uh, with a good tank, you're looking at at least 900 DPS, including drones. Uh, my f I've got a one that I use to care bear in the uh, C5 wormhole uh, for when I want to clear subcap, um, uh, when I want to clear uh, smaller um, sleepers faster than with my Legion. Obviously, I need uh, lodges because it's a C5. And that Abaddon, my Abaddon, puts out, uh, I believe, 1500 DPS according to the game. So that's pretty neat. Uh, drawbacks, it's slow. And I mean slow. Like super slow. It is crawling. You will be uh, moving at uh, with the full armor tank and uh, Trimark armor rigs. Uh, you will be pushing 70 meters per, se per second downhill with a, uh, a strong following wind. And uh, if you have taken uh, enough time to accelerate your full speed, so uh, you're not getting anywhere fast. Second drawback and a more serious one is uh, it's got very very um, uh, fragile capacitor. Uh, being cap stable in the baton is sort of hard. So it's got weak capacitor. If you're firing non-stop and you don't have any cap uh, capacitor, rigs or modules, and you do not have income, you will require incoming cap transfer from time to time. Not all the time, but from time to time, because you're not cap stable. That uh, bearing button that I have in the, the wormhole is not cap stable. After a while, uh, just firing the lasers and uh, with four tracking computers to uh, give them more range of tracking, depending on the, which range the sleepers are in, uh, just firing the lasers, I run out of capacitor. Uh, it's not used in big Nullsec fights very much because it doesn't have the range. Everybody knows it's super strong, but uh, it's not going anywhere fast, and uh, it's fairly easy to kite. Uh, otherwise, if uh, you do find yourself within range of uh, uh, that sort of fleet, you are going to uh, be sort of sorry because it's hard to kill and uh, it dishes out a lot of damage. Last one is one of the most used sh uh, battleships in the game. Just after the Glent Dominics, the Geddon. Now, this guy is the one ship where the uh, formula of giving it a bonus to energy and drones has worked. What it has is uh, the bonus to energy neutral. The, um, the bonus it has is entirely to range. What this means is, again, with uh, more battle, uh, Battleship 5, your heavy neutralizers will hit out to 38 kilometers. Uh, I believe that in the Alliance tournament commenters, some people who are better than me at fitting uh, know these values by, by heart. So I remember 38, but it's actually uh, 37.4 or something from the AT uh, command team. Uh, take their words over mine any day. I never bothered to look it up exactly. Point being that you will be neutered at a good 35 kilometers which means that if you are an interceptor and you want to point this guy you sort of have a problem because you will be getting uh, some heavy neutralizers and uh, one shot of these will just kill your cap uh, it's also got a bonus to drone hit points and damage so uh, and this one has the bandwidth to fli uh, to fit a full flight of sentries with uh, the usual um, plentiful amount drone bay so uh, it can reload so this means um, 
you can uh, you can fill it to dish out a fair amount of damage, and or uh, most most often you use it for the nukes. Uh, it's a very it's very good as an anti roaming ship, and also um, as a, a solo uh, multi uh, multi function ship. Like you give it uh, some nukes in the high, some DPS, maybe missiles. And then you've got the drones for extra DPS. And then you've got reasonable tank because we've got a lot of low slots. So you can put uh, armor repairs, little resistance modules, then some drone damage amplifiers. And then you will need, if you're in the fleet, you will absolutely rely on cap transfers. If not, you will need a couple of cap boosters in your mid slots to uh, keep cap stable and feel, feed these nukes. Any questions about battleships? Okay, I'm going to uh, go super quick over the industrial ships. Uh, industrial ships, you've got, um, which is it? This Beast Tower is the one that has the most cargo capacity of all the Tech 1 industrials if you fit it full cargo, meaning cargo rigs and uh, expanded cargo holds uh, in the lows. The reason it's got this is it does not have the biggest base hold, but it's got a lot of uh, low slots, so you can put a lot of expanded cargo holds in it. If you do that though, you have absolutely no tank, so uh, do not carry anything other than say uncompressed ore in that base tower, unless you're in a place where you absolutely know you will not be ganked. Sigil. Sigil is uh, the fast version. It's fast, it's tankier. Uh, you can have some pretty fun fit with it. Uh, it's the fast uh, industrial haulers, nothing specific. Uh, it's nice to have fewer more, but it's got nothing really on the other fast haulers of all the other races. You can have some absolutely stupid tank if you uh, cram it full of like, you can make a full um, shield passive tank on it. Uh, Francie asks, with the Geddon, should your first flight of drones be new drones to help drain extra fast and send out the damage drones? Uh, depends on where you are. Uh, depends on what you're fighting. Depends on where you're at. Generally speaking, I, I say no. Uh, because neutralizing drones are not that powerful. So um, if you're, say, in a fleet, you have heavy nudes of your own. And that is going to drain your opponent's cap pretty hard already. So if you're in the fleet, you're better off probably using your heavy nudes and the remaining cap stable, and then the drones are uh, bonus damage. If you're in a small gang, like if you're killing roamers, then you probably won't, uh, you will nuke the Tonga's capacitor uh, with your heavy nudes anyway. So uh, like if you want to absolutely kill uh, his capacitor immediately. I'd say you activate all your heavy nudes immediately, and then you, uh, after the first si cycle, you start staggering them. But uh, other than that, yeah, if you want to go absolutely max nudes, then you probably want to, um, uh, you probably want a different ship than uh, using new drones. So again, the Geddon is not the one that will nude the most of all the battleships. Its bonus is to range. So what it means is it can apply its nudes uh, to 35 kilometers. Uh, no, that's okay, friends. You didn't interrupt. I didn't have much to add to the industrial section. That they, they, they're not particularly remarkable compared to uh, other races, industrials, really. All right, guys. Do you have any questions uh, on all the ships that I have mentioned so far? Uh, please type a W in the uh, lecture chat channel if you're still awake, just to check. Why would you want to fit four steps on a magnet for longer move? I'm probably mispronouncing the name, sorry. Uh, I'm really not that keen on doing uh, that sort of things. Um, 
I'd say fitted for uh, agility is going to work better. It's a frigate, so it's an exploration frigate, so it's re reasonably agile. Um, I'd say give it a lot of nanos, that sort of things. But that's just me. Um, so, for all of you who are going to log now, here is the thread for um, for the first part of this class. Uh, I'm going to stay online for another like one minute or so. Then I'm going to take a two minutes break and uh, drink some water. So, if you have any questions, that would be great. Any comments on the class so far? Uh, please post it on the uh, thread. If you, even if you do not have, um, if you just want to say how uh, much or how little you like the class, uh, particularly how bad it was as uh, at keeping on uh, staying on time, then that would be a great place to post it so uh, we get some feedback. It's always nice to have. Then in like two minutes, let's say at uh, yeah uh, at uh, nineteen uh, twenty nine. Uh, 1929. I will be moving on to the um, the other ships. Yeah, for all Unistas, uh, yeah, that's a good point uh, that uh, Zenla writes, is um, Unistas want to graduate, your activity is judged, among other things, by uh, how much, how active you've been on the forums. So uh, posting uh, gives you little brownie points with the uni if you want to uh, get a better site. It's not, that's not going to be the big difference, but it helps, yeah. <laughs> 